Hey everyone, Shark here. Got a 1v1 for you today on Toronto Coastline between Road to Tunis, ranked number 77 with the Wehrmacht, and Ferragi, rank 1 as you'd expect. So this match demonstrates an interesting twist on the US Armored Battle Group, uh, which got hit hardest amongst the US forces in the latest patch, as well as excellent use of the uniqueness of this map in the late game. And that's it for the intro. Let's go. Okay, here we go at the top of the map, the east side of the map here on Toronto coastline. We have Road to Tunis getting his tier one infantry company out and immediately queuing up two additional pioneers. Uh, he's in blue. And then Farage on the west side of the map, uh, the bottom of the screen, is in red, immediately getting his tier one out and getting an engineer to go along with his scouts. This map. I, I find really interesting from a 1v1, well, it's obviously a 1v1 map. I find it interesting from like a, a maneuver perspective, right? Because you have these, uh, the heavy fuel points and even the smaller ones that support them are kind of along the flanks and in the opposite corner. So this map plays out a little differently. You can go straight at your opponents here, but all the resources require you to reach and then expose you to some wonky retreat paths. So uh, really interesting design. Um, I think it plays out a little differently than some of the other maps, but I like this. Um, and I think it provides some variety in the map pool. I'm sure someone's going to tell me that it's super unbalanced and uh, doesn't play well, but it's just my my personal opinion. So Farage getting his first rifle squad out. Road to Tunis is going to get a Grenadier to go along with his uh, team of pioneers here. And so, yeah, you see a fair amount of like sandbags and barbed wire going down. Um, but I'm really interested in what he does with these pioneers. Uh, Farage is going to grab this additional fuel point here uncontested. Um, this is a, a spot I love to try to grab and lay mines early. But with the scouts, obviously, you can't lay the mines. So that's more of an option for uh, Road to Tunis than it is Farage. Farage scouts kiting these uh, pioneers at range here. The Pioneer SMG is doing a fair amount of damage at max range against the scouts, but there we go. One model drops. We're going to see a second squad of Grenadiers out for Road to Tunis. Neither side having uh, chosen their battle group yet. What I will say is that that third Pioneer squad, uh, immediately it feels like Road to Tunis has greater map presence. Um, and he's just got like an extra maneuver unit out there compared to uh, Farage right now. And similar manpower uh, incomes and, and amounts at the moment. So it's an interesting strategy. We'll see how it pans out. But yeah, if you look at the tack map, you can see how everything's kind of converging over here, the high resource points. Um, I think this just results in some interesting engagements and, and interesting opportunities to flank. Engineers try to close the pioneers. Meanwhile, rifles squaring off with pioneers and grenadiers in cover. A second rifle squad shows up, so these rifles are going to drop into heavy cover here. Makes sense. I, I take it back. They're going to stand out in the road. First, Flammenwerfer shows up. Yeah, rifles take a fair amount of damage moving back and actually yeah, one squad retreats. The uh, Flammenwerfer on the pioneer is a great call. And Farage, full retreat. Uh, his scout's going to cap up this mission's point. He's got one additional rifle squad now on the way out. And he's looking at all the damage done. And so he's already teching med station and infantry support center. Meanwhile, Road to Tunis getting his third grenadier squad out and now doing his tier one veterancy. Scouts in green cover dueling with grenadiers. Oh man, Gren's just annihilate them once they get in close rifles trying to square off with these pioneers but just not doing very much damage there's one like full health model left yeah that rifle squad also retreats the substantial risk of a uh, manpower bleed here for Farage. and now you can see from the map here uh this is paying off most of the casualties taken by the pioneers grenadiers at full health uh, and really starting to take over good map control, decapping the uh, plus 10 fuel for Farage right now. Rifles coming out with engineers in support. Mine down here, which engineers will see thanks to the minesweeper. Uh, these Grens 
take no damage on that awkward retreat path. Enemy contact! Achtung! A fourth Bren squad now coming out for Road to Tunis. Meanwhile, counter capping with the Grens, try to get a triple cap on and put uh, the drain on Farragy. Now, Captain and a rifle squad closing with these Grenadiers. Grenadiers now with the uh, officer's quarters will basically have access to free healing no matter what. Man, look at these taking a ton of damage but not dropping a model. That lack of manpower bleed is going to hurt Farragy in the long run. Man, where did these riflemen learn how to shoot? They can't even hit these pioneers standing in the open with a flamethrower. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of the map, rifles and grins squaring off as Farragy tries to counter cap. The rifles over here on the south side force retreat, as is the captain. Road to Tunis now going for the Panzer Grenadier Company. Farragy has decided he's had enough. He locks in the armored battle group, gets rapid production and veterancy one for his vehicles. He has a weapon support center up, interestingly enough. Um, so maybe we'll see some half-track play here. Now, if you get the mechanized support center, you can build the different half-track models out uh, outright. Um, yeah, so we're going to be a half-track. I really like the new M13 half-track with the 75 mil conversion. Uh, it's just, it's really nice. It has really good range in the barrage. A pretty lengthy cooldown. But it can be a really good replacement for a mortar. Oh, good mine. If a Faust comes in and that half track immediately smoked, great trade. Not even a trade for Odishunas. Nice setup. Rifles forced to retreat as well as the captain. Rifles and engineers over on the flank here fighting with some grenadiers. Finally starting to make some damage. And now, Road to Genius, you're going to see Panzer Grenadiers come out as well. Now, Farragy, again, primarily due to the way this map's designed, was able to take good, pretty good map control. But now, here comes the uh, the Grenadier Blob with Pioneer support. And these rifles are forced to back off. And with the, with the changes to the flamers, it's making it very difficult. Like, Barragy hops his units in green cover, but the pioneer with the flamethrower just burns them down. And so the the U.S. infantry just not scaling against the Wehrmacht infantry, and now outnumbered five to three, plus the support from the pioneers. Uh, and with the immediate death of that uh, M13, Barragy, despite his map control, very much feeling on the back foot here. He's unlocked the Scott, uh, and he can build one. So I, to me, that seems like a good natural counter to a lot of this Wehrmacht infantry play, especially before, and there it goes, it's popping on the field now, before you see a lot of AT guns. And where they're really struggling is whittling down models on this Pioneer squad between the merge and the healing. Oh man. So Scott's on the way, and Farragy countercapping on the south side of the map, but that captain gets gunned down on on a very late retreat. Rifle squad bouncing away. Panzer Grenadiers are here. The Scott sees them. And now Road to Tunis locks in Luftwaffe and unlocks the LG-40 uh, Recoilless, which he's going to call in. So, this also got some pretty significant buffs this patch. Interested to see how this plays out. Rifle is closing with Grenadiers here. On the opposite side of the map, a scout trying to support rifles and, uh, I'm sorry, Scott trying to support rifles and scouts. Well, good hits from the Scott forces the retreat. Rifles do a fair amount of damage to these Grenadiers, but Panzer Grenadiers show up and change the nature of the fight there. A second Scott hits the field for Farragy. So he's determined. He has an infantry problem and he needs to bring in something to eradicate that infantry. So two Scots will do it. The risk now is hard AT. But we'll see how he's able to manage this going forward. 
Oh, the pioneers. The scout. Oh, I think it'll be okay here. This Scott here forces away Panzer Grenadiers, so it looks like Road to Tuna is basically going to have a, a more or less full retreat. Now another LG-40 coming in. I wonder if this is deliberate, or if he's experimenting with the LG-40 over the, over the Pac-40. You know, I'll be honest with you, if I was going to experiment with a new strategy and then saw my opponent was Farage, I, I would probably think twice about that. Uh, but we'll see, right? They have uh, the ability to shoot the uh, the HE rounds to do extra damage against infantry. He's got quite a mass of infantry here. The ability to self-heal. Um, so if he can set these engagements in his favor and steal one of these Scots early, uh, might make a big difference. Baragy now doubling down, or tripling down, I should say, on the anti-infantry play. Getting a sniper out. Meanwhile, Road to Tunis uh, has had exceptional fuel control, and he's getting his tier four out. All right, the Scott with just one rifle squad in support to deal with this uh, infantry advance, and it's doing a ton of damage. But again, just not getting a whole lot of manpower bleed. Newell, Scott, ooh, knocks out a mine, nice. On the opposite uh, side of the map here, doing a lot of damage to the Pioneers and Grenadiers. Another mine goes off, damaging the Panzer Grenadiers. Now these two LG-40s capping the center, it looks like they're gonna try to get some cheeky shots in on this Scott. Ooh, there's two. Scott holds fire wisely. Is able to get out of the arc of the LG-40s. Rifles force off the remaining infantry. Grenadiers cap the fuel point, but Farage, behind the force of those Scots, is now going to effectively cap up the resource-heavy side of the map, which he needs to do. He needs to deny Road to Tunis some of that fuel uh, before some real heavy armor comes out. As you can tell, Farage does not have a motor pool here, and so what we're like to see, likely to see, is a skip to the EZ-8. He's already gotten the recovery vehicle, so uh, or unlocked it, right? So, if he builds, he's good to basically unlock the EZ-8 as long as he can build a tank depot. If he's not going to build the tank depot, I'm sorry, I've got the battle group backwards. Ignore me. He's still got it. Well, he can get it now anyway, because he has a Scott unlocked. I was right. I just didn't know I was right. Anyway. So now, Road to Tunis, right? Fully healed with this mass of German infantry supported with two Luftwaffe anti-tank uh, recoilless rifles. Rolling out here, and again, this is like relatively unique to this map. You can kind of charge to the center, or you can swing around wide and try to go for some flanks. This Scott has taken some damage, but actually, Farage relocated the healthy Scott to the near axis of approach, uh, and is repairing the one on the far axis. So, and it looks like there's going to be a, a spread out with the uh, LG 40 centrally located. Scott immediately starts chunking away some of the Grenadiers. Rifles in heavy cover facing down Grenadiers. Wow, these Grens just not dropping models. Here, the Sniper drops one. White Phosphorus try to deny the line of sight the LG-40s. Grenadiers are going to try to close here for a Faust. This rifle squad up here is isolated. Oh, there we go. One Gren squad whittled down, forced to retreat. Same with the second. This rifle squad holding its ground, taking a lot of damage. It's backed up by an additional rifle squad. Sniper continuing to do work. Yeah, it definitely changes that engagement. And now Farage going for BARs. Meanwhile, uh, the Scots basically force off that far approach, the far axis approach by uh, Road to Tunis. And now Farage going for the BARs. Unbeknownst to him, a Panzer IV is on the way. The other thing is, with the uh, infantry reserves unlocked from Road to Tunis, all of this manpower bleed is just going to hit 25% less. So, Fergie in a decent spot. He's got his scouts and his sniper pushed all the way up. He's got riflemen with the ARs. Now, what he doesn't have right now is really good control of these resources. He's sending scouts and engineers over to Cap. There's a pioneer squad there. Oh, and here comes the Panzer IV. And Farage has no real 
uh, AT available to him. These Scots, yeah, drop a white phosphorus round and then immediately back up. I like this use of the white phosphorus to deny the base exit, but what he really needs is anti-tank as soon as possible. And so he has a choice with 120 fuel. He can go for uh, tier four and then wait until he has enough fuel for a vehicle or for a 45 fuel, he can get a motor pool and then try to get an AT gun out. Looks like he's going to actually divert the Scots over to the uh, the flank of the map here. Try to, to gain some resource of advantage. Meanwhile, massive push coming in from Road to Tunis. And Faraji has decided he's going for the motor pool. Riflemen are on full retreat. I, this squad retreating, this is smart because you don't want to get cut off on the retreat path. Sniper retreating as well. Scots are going to move back to the base because they don't want to get caught by the Panzer IV out of position. Scouts and engineers are capping up the high resources and laying some mines, and riflemen are going to go into this building to try to hold the VP. So pretty much an admission from Faraji that he's not prepared to deal with this tank. Now the Scots are going to harass a little bit while the infantry come out again on this short axis. All right, big push coming through here while the Panzer IV is potentially out of position. Yeah, the Pioneer is caught out of position. We'll, we'll retreat. Now, can they focus fire here and do some damage to these infantry? Lots of damage. One Grand Squad Force to retreat. There we go. Full retreat across this front. <laughs> Meanwhile, these rifles and scouts at the risk of going down. Scott's now pushing on the flank. An AT gun out coming for uh, Faraji to help him manage the armor threat from Road to Tunis. Oh, the Gren squad. Oh, Sniper whips its shot. Oh, and the rifle squads do pick up the Grenadier squad. So one Grenadier squad down for Faraji. AT gun is still building. God, it's going to be the longest build time in the game. Whenever you need an AT gun, nowhere to be found. All right, so Faraji's going to consolidate here and recapture the short axis. And you see kind of in the fog of war, not just the P4, the two LG40s, and then some infantry coming out. Scott's using their sight from the capture point to get a couple cheeky barrages off. Road to Tune is uh, floating quite a few resources and fuel, so he'll have enough to put out a, another P4 here shortly, or potentially a run bear. A T gun on the field. Uh, backs up before it gets a shot off. Rifle's starting to bleed a little bit. B4 on approach. A little bit of smoke coming in from the sky. Second B4 in the build queue. Fergie's got enough fuel now for the tier 4. I think he still hasn't chosen which EZ8 because I think he's trying to see if he can get away building the tier four and using the war machine, or if he needs uh, to rely on the call-in. Second AT gun hits the field. Engineers close the pioneers, making good use of their grease guns. Yep, force the pioneers away. Rifles force grenadiers off on the flank. But this second P4 just hit the field. There we go. Volley fire in on the first one. One shot hits, one shot bounces. Fire's getting focused now on these Panzer Grenadiers from the Scott and the Rifles. Panzer Grenadiers instead focus on the AT guns. A couple more shots penetrate. One P4 put on hold fire and backs up. Along with the fresh P4. They're going to back up to repair it looks like. And now Faraji's infantry advance here in the center. Going to take over the short axis again and soon he'll actually have the triple cap on. Now, Road to Tunis going for the Tier 4 Officer's Veteran C, or Officer Quarters. One Rifle Squad getting very aggressive, pushing against these Pioneers in the open. Faraji now going for advanced logistics with some of his saved fuel. Oh, now this Rifle Squad getting bled by Grenadiers right on the, the flank of Road to Tunis' base. Now you see more smoke coming in at the base exit. 
as well as white phosphor. Now, what what I think is interesting, I wonder why Farrakhan didn't use smoke to then allow one of his vehicles to move up and then white phosphorus to look closer to the headquarters. But, you know, he is the number one player in the world, so he probably knows better than me. Stoss Trooper now coming out for Road to Tunis. Um, good choice for dealing with some of these AT guns, for dealing with the sniper, and with the infantry reserves, uh, you're not as worried about the manpower bleed. Alright, now Road to Tunis is leaving his base here, and they're gonna go challenge the riflemen that were, uh, trying to steal all of their fuel. That rifle squad retreats. Farragy's gonna relocate his forces. Both Panzer IVs, one still on hold fire for some reason. Both Panzer IVs still set up. And now it looks like we're gonna see a big push here from Road to Tunis. Easy 8 production unlocked. So Farragy needs his tier 4 out, which he doesn't have yet. And here come the P4s. Chip away at a rifle squad. AT gun set up, it doesn't get a shot off. Pioneer spotting. Beginning we are losing ground. Now, Farragy harassing with his scout squad here. Meanwhile, all of Rodriguez's forces are extending deep onto the flank. This move will either pay off brilliantly or be a disaster. One or the other. He's also going for the upgraded armored skirts. I think it's because he's at pop cap, so it makes sense for him to use his fuel right now to invest in the quality of his units. The enemy has 300 points remaining. The pioneers capture. They draw out a rifle squad, hit a mine. Hands are granted the ears. are going to hop into this house here. They have to be careful. The house are at risk of collapsing. Sniper opens fire and... It hits the tree, I guess? Panzer Grenadier is going to continue to push. Rifle starting to get bled. Sniper finally takes some damage from the Panzer Grenadier. Oh, it takes a lot of damage. One Pioneer squad goes down. Scott's almost eliminate the Panzer Grenadiers. And here come the P4s on the flank. They force one AT gun out of position. The other is looking the wrong way. Oh, the P-Grens do go down. One AT gun cleared. The other AT gun gets knocked out by a grenadier uh, grenade there. P4 is on the retreat path now with nothing to worry about in terms of AT. Uh, doing a lot of damage here to this infantry. One rifle squad annihilated. Scott's now open fire and just invite return fire to include from an LG-40. Meanwhile, Farragy building his tier 4 and now saving up fuel for his EZ-8. Yeah, uh, sniper chipping away at the Stoss troop in here. The rifles bleed as they approach. LG-40 is trying to knock out these M1AT guns. One is recruited by the scouts. Whiffs its first shot is immediately decrewed for its trouble. And now, Rotatunis has recruited the other AT gun. Now a Hellcat on the field for Farage instead. Man, really, really good push by Rotatunis there. Shoving Farragy back into his base, grabbing both of those AT guns and a rifle squad in exchange for a Panzer Grenadier squad and a Pioneer squad. So, pretty decent trade there. You would have liked to see a kill. Oh, this rifle squad may go down. Hellcat plinking away at the side armor. Now, oh, follow up shot just does not kill the rifle squad. Another squad of Pioneers goes down while trying to repair. Uh, this sniper doing a lot of work in flipping some of these infantry engagements, especially against the Grenadiers. P4's back on the advance, maybe trying to catch this sniper out of position. Sniper forced to back up. P4 is unable to get a shot off. Instead, they'll focus on this rifle squad. Hellcat gets a good shot off, and so these P4s are going to back up and look to repair. Now, Road to Tunis has enough pop cap cleared up. He can get another uh, P4 out. Oh, Stoss Troop and hit a mine. 
and and continue to bleed to the sniper. Wow, pretty hectic series of engagements there. Ooh, Hellcat finds a sneaky shot. I think supported by the flare from the scouts. Now, Fergie about a minute away from his first easy eight as well. Cool. Yeah, Sniper supporting a rifle squad makes Grenadiers much squishier. Hey, T-Gun gets a shot off on the Scott. And so now you basically have the sole surviving Pioneer squad back here repairing uh, these two damaged P4s. A third one on the way. Grenadiers continue to find mines laid by Farage. The road to Tunis has decent anti-tank between the two LG-40s, the captured M1. I kind of think maybe a Brumbear here. Because now his problem is Farage's uh, infantry and team weapons. The Scots are more than hard countered by the AT weapons and the two P4s that are already on the field. But again, what do I know? Third Panzer IV hits the field as an EZ-8 hits the field for Farage. And so both sides approaching what would ordinarily be critical mass for vehicles. Scouts using stealth reconnaissance to crawl their way up and get eyes on this P4 blob here. Another squad of Pioneers coming out for Road to Tunis, which makes sense. Scott supporting a rifle squad and engineer on the flank gonna allow Farage to kind of push wide here. Here comes the EZ-8. It, he knows where these uh, P4s are thanks to the scouts. Oh, but he's got to be careful. P4s are moving up. Scouts immediately get chunked down. And Farage without an AT gun needs to rely on the Hellcat and the EZ-8 to face down these P4s. Scouts in good position to support the sniper. Oh, good use of white phosphorus. Oh, and now here comes the Luftwaffe Loiter. One Scott is being targeted. Takes a ton of damage from the first uh, burst. Oh, one squad of uh, rifling goes down. Scott destroyed. Another squad of rifle still being targeted. Here come the P4s all the way up to Farage's spot at the, the edge of the base. One Scott supporting the uh, Easy 8 and the Hellcat. But because of this loiter, Road to Tuner is able to push all the way up. LG-40 gets a shot off on the scout. On the Scott. And these P4s are just going to park at the base exit. Rifleman forced to retreat yet again. A new rifle squad comes out for Farage. The P4s could potentially stay here and just knock out this tank depot, which would be a horrific loss for Farage, given that he went for the production. They think better of it. Oh. And uh, LG-40 hits a mine. Fortunate it wasn't one of the vehicles. Now Farage moving to fight his way out of his base. Scouts throw up a flare. Provide additional sight. Hellcat gets in a nice big shot on one of these P4s. Oh. Counterfire from AT guns. LG-40s are set up. Rifle sprint to flank. Mine set off now. Oh, this rifle squad. Yeah, brand new rifle squad. Oh my goodness, it gets away. Only because the easy 8 was there to absorb the attention. Both sides starting to bleed like crazy. Oh, another squad of pioneers goes down to the easy 8 can he get the Grens too? He does get the Grens squad in exchange for a wild volley from the Panzer IVs. So both sides in needing of returning to lick their wounds. Now, Road to Tunis has got to be a misclick. Yeah, he had two Kettenkrods queued up. One I could understand, but two seems like a lot. Meanwhile, Farage is about to get the triple cap back on. So somehow, despite losing one of his Scots, uh, and one of his rifle squads, as well as all of his AT guns previously, 
Um, he's able to kind of battle back, uh, despite the loiter. Now a fourth Panzer IV coming out for Road to Tunis. Meanwhile, Fergie recovers one of the AT guns. He's returning it to his headquarters. To he really packs. needs to figure out a way to repair all these vehicles. You guys know where my head's at. I'm going for the wrecker. But that's just me. Supply. The other option would be something smart, like another Easy 8 or, uh, you know, a Hellcat. But it'd be a lot of fun to see a wrecker out here. Just saying. I really do like the use of the Scott here to support the rifles against this these uh, Axis infantry. So the fourth P4 hits the field, and again I'm concerned for Farage. I don't think he has the AT on the field to deal with this, especially because Road to Tunis has demonstrated quite a bit of skill in maneuvering the P4s around, and then. Obviously, you've also got the Stuka Loiter that's available. The Scots are very squishy. Um, there's a lot of risk there if there's a well-timed Loiter with a P4 push. Wow! That shot knocks out the Scots way down. The Scouts way down. I'm sorry. I'm tongue tied today. AT gun set up. Hellcat set up. Here comes the Panzer IV wave. Easy 8 and Scott on the flank. So Farage has got a nice wide approach. Defensive position set up here. Rifle supported by a sniper advance and then find all four P4s. Oh, this rifle squad getting absolutely hammered. And now rifle squad goes down. Here comes the loiter. As the P4s push, AT gun cleared by the Panzer IVs. Hellcat damage, easy eight now, out of position, unable to deal. Oh, another easy eight just gets out. Now it is on the opposite flank, unable to support because of this Luftwaffe loiter. Sauce trooping at risk of going down here to the Scott plus the easy eight. Oh, they take a ton of damage. Here's the easy eight to chase. Gotta be careful though at this point with that easy eight getting caught out by these four P4s who are just hunting American infantry units right now. Although they're on prioritized vehicles. Playing ring around the rosy with this rifle squad. And it looks like this rifle squad is gonna get away. Sniper trying to declare the AT gun. And here come the four P4s again. And now, Road to Tunis, getting another Grenadier squad out. He's down to a single Grenadier squad. So he suffered quite a few infantry losses. Man, just when I thought Farage was going to start to build a mass to climb back in, those four P4s really shoved him off. But what's incredible is throughout all of this, he's maintained a VP advantage. <coughs> well, P4s take a shot from the Hellcat. Hellcat's going to move up, supported by the rifles and the sniper for sight. Here comes the Scott. Easy 8 on the field as well. I think if you're Road to Tunis at this point, you're actually losing on VPs and you're about to suffer a triple cap. I think you need to think about a hardcore base dive here to try to just wipe Farage out. And now that another Hellcat hits the field, the ability to manage that gets significantly reduced. P4s here on what looks like a, a little bit of a dive, but they're going to set up on this central VP. And I guess force Farage to push. Now supported by the two LG40s and the M1. Sniper there to, to chunk it down. All the P4s still on prioritized vehicles. He finally fixes that. Man, Road to Tunis down to 75 VPs, finally gets uh, a second VP back in his favor. Now we're going to see a half track out from Farage. I wonder if he's going to go for the quad mount to help prevent the uh, the loiter from being so decisive. Grenadiers try to chip away at these engineers as they uh, capture this VP. Road to Tunis thinking about 
uh, a big sweep with his P4s, finds one of the Hellcats, and he's about to roll right into a second supported by an Easy 8. Ooh, triple vet P4, forced to go and hold fire and back up. And Sniper continuing to whittle away at these Axis Infantry. Oh, P4s find the uh, triple fed engineer and knock it out. And then they're going to return here to the central VP. The Hellcat and Easy 8 think about a flank, but decide against it. And it would have been very dangerous with that AT gun and LG-40 uh, available. Fergie's going to cap the center VP, but Rhodotunis is going to counter cap on the opposite side. Now we see the Wrecker out for Farage. Hell yeah, dude. Victory point lost. And then we see the quad mount 50 here. It looks like it's going to sit in base. And just try to counter that Stuka Loiter. So Road to Tune is still going to have a slight advantage. In VPs. Having two to one. Oh, Sniper... At risk of going down, Loiter comes in, Wrecker gets smoked by the P4s. Oh, uh, Rifle Squad goes down as well. The M16 not doing much of anything to Loiter. Oh, uh, there he goes. Knocks down one of the airplanes. So it took a little bit of time off of that Loiter. Okay, I'll give it that. Did not save the Wrecker, which is unfortunate. And Farage is now down to a single rifle squad, his sniper, and a scout squad. So he doesn't, doesn't have the ability to repair any of these vehicles. And now here comes the P4 train. Lots of pressure. One P4 knocked out. Second Hellcat shows up. Scott goes down. Now here comes the LG-40 and the AT gun to support. A second P4 knocked out. Oh, Hellcat snared. Grenadiers and riflemen exchanging uh, fire and grenades here in the center VP. Sniper trying to support. The rifle squad may go down to the Grens here. Despite the sniper, rifle squad goes down. Easy 8 and Hellcat on the field trying to push on the opposite flank. Oh, Easy 8 takes a shot from the AT gun. Panzer 4 is trying to follow up. Sniper trying to clear these AT crews. Another wrecker out on the field, which I think is absolutely required. Yep, LG 40 knocked out by the sniper. This sniper at this point single handedly keeping Farage in this game. But now Road to Tunis has the triple cap, and Farage is desperately short on infantry. Another P4 on the way out for Road to Tunis. A sniper now being used to cap the central VP. If the P4s come across him and find him, this is... Oh, they do. And there goes the war hero sniper. Hellcat moves up, tries to avenge him, and whiffs his first shot against the P4. Third P4 hits the field. The Wrecker is busy uh, repairing the other vehicles on the field. This uh, this Hellcat, not in a position to challenge all this infantry. And Farage now just lacking the manpower, the, the field presence to capture and really contest any of these VPs. Even with the Wrecker's super fast repair speed, it's going to be another minute before all these vehicles are at, at full health. And Farage under the triple cap at a high risk of going down here. Road to Tunis. Uh, 10 seconds away from having the Luftwaffe loiter available to him as well. Even with the M16 on the field, that could be enough to really disrupt some capping. So Farage over here going to grab one of these VPs, but he needs two to really shut down the bleed here. Another Hellcat on the way out. But that's not going to help him. The enemy have 
against these infantry and team weapons that Rotatunis still has on the field. I think he's got enough AT. Enemy forces have captured a victory point. Well, the recovery vehicle going to scout for these vehicles as they approach the center VP here. It immediately draws a ton of fire. Oh, and here comes the loiter. The Hellcat's going hunting. Easy 8 is going to get snared, gunned down by the Stukas, and now knocked out by the P4 and the AT gun. Hellcat's on the flank. They knock out one P4. Looks like they'll get a second and a moral victory just in time to lose the game here. And wow, Road to Tunis pulls off the upset and beats Farragy. All right, so for Road to Tunis, the Wehrmacht player, opens with three Pioneers, which I haven't seen before. Uh, it's a lot of early game, uh, basically pressure, map presence, capping power. He does a really good job using uh, the Pioneer with the Flammenwerfer with the Grenadiers to essentially put the riflemen and early engagements in, the, in dilemmas, right? Like if they're in cover, then they get hit with the flamethrower. And if they're out of cover, then they get uh, knocked down by the car 98s. So really kind of an interesting uh, technique there. He uses it well, he uses the merge. So um, I have nothing to fault the, the pioneer heavy build. Then he goes into the infantry company, uh, three grenadiers en route to four total. Uh, gets his tier one officer's quarters out, which is really necessary right now if you're playing a Grand Heavy build with the Wehrmacht. Uh, goes to tier three, gets a squad of Panzer Grenadiers out, then he selects the Luftwaffe battle group and immediately calls in two of the LG-40 recoilless rifles. Um, it's an interesting strategy. I don't think they have a ton of impact on the game. Um, in fact, in dealing with some of Farage's armor later on, maybe the pack 40s would have been better. I, I know they have the HE round buff, but I don't remember seeing them in the game at all, believe it or not. Um, so he has AT, but it's not as heavy as you'd like, like with a pack 40. So it, that's an interesting choice. Um, I wonder if he's just kind of trying it out, but either way, uh, work, work for him. Uh, Panzer Company tier four is up next. He gets two P4s. Uh, he texts the tier four officer's quarters. He gets the squad of Stas trooping out. I think this is after the Panzer Grenadiers were, were killed and he lost a couple of his Grenadier squads. He needs the Stas trooping to deal with uh, AT guns um, and potentially work down that, that US sniper. He texts the armored skirts as well on the vehicles. This is really smart because as he's developing like a fuel advantage and he's close to his pop cap, using that fuel to tech uh, so that his vehicles are more effective, a little bit more durable, makes a lot of sense. Uh, he gets two more Panzer IVs out, and so for a, most of the late game, he has four Panzer IVs on the field, replaces a lost Pioneer, replaces a lost Grenadier, uh, and then replaces uh, a Panzer IV near the end of the match. Uh, for the Luftwaffe battle group, obviously, you know, you get the Falschirm Pioneers. Really don't have an impact because uh, he didn't choose this until later on. He goes for the LG-40s, and then the infantry reserves, um, and I think this really helps him quite a bit. So... Uh, initially, he's doing really well getting good infantry trades against Farragy. As Farragy techs into BARs, um, as he gets a sniper out on the field, that Luftwaffe infantry reserve, 25% uh, reduction in manpower cost for reinforcement, like that continues to save Road to Tunis in terms of manpower. Um, so it's a really smart choice, and it's a really good counter to the sniper, uh, like a passive counter, which I think is really interesting. Um, I don't think he uses the strafing run much at all. Doesn't use the Falschirm Jaegers. He does use the Luftwaffe Loiter uh, a couple of times. Knocks out a Scott with it at the end of the game. There helps him with the easy or yeah the easy eight and a couple of the Hellcats. Uh, this Loiter, this man, I still hate it. But uh, good use of the ability to to win some key engagements and provide him like some additional oomph to his offensive pressure to kind of break the stalemate there. All right, and for Farragy, a little bit of a longer build order here, right? Obviously, he starts with the Scout, gets a Barracks, gets an Engineer and three rifles. Pretty standard opening start for U.S. Uh, gets a Med Tent, goes Infantry Support Center. Then he techs into the Weapon Support Center uh, and selects an Armored Battle Group. From there, he gets an M3 Half Track. And the M3 with a 75 mil uh, cannon on it is actually a really cool unit uh, after some of the changes that they've made. Like, it basically replace a Mortar this long range barrage the barrage has a really long cooldown but the range is insane plus it's a good at unit early on that half track gets immediately smoked by a combination of a mine and a panzerfaust which is kind of a so it's kind of a bummer 
Um, the weapon support center at the end ends up really only being used for the sniper at that point. He calls in two M8 Scots, which do a lot to help him in the mid game, right? They help get his rifles kind of over the hump uh, against a road to Tunis's kind of like overwhelming Grenadier, Pioneer, Panzer Grenadier uh, force there. So I, I like this choice. The two Scots he uses them really well throughout the match, uh, especially with the nerfs to seek and destroy. I think this is going to be the way a lot of people go, especially when they're facing infantry heavy builds, which we'll talk about later. The sniper um, really does great work. Uh, is just all over the place, helping him turn those engagements early. I, I, obviously, Farage plays his snipers quite a bit. It's a little bit kind of off meta to get a sniper out this late, but it makes a lot of sense. He uses it really well. He gets a fourth rifleman. He texts BARs for the extra infantry firepower. Uh, which he really needs as the Vermont infantry game veterancy. Then he goes for the motor pool, and this is this is kind of like a weird spot in the match. So he's got 120 fuel. I actually remember this from the cast. He got 120 fuel, so he can build the tank depot. Um, but he knows that he would still have to wait for the fuel uh, for any sort of tank, right? So um, it's 70 fuel for a Hellcat. He's facing the P4s, so he decides to go for the AT guns, the motor pool, and delay uh, his tank depot and his Hellcat. Those AT guns do a, a little bit of initial work, but then really end up um, just kind of getting knocked out. One of them actually, Road to Tunis, picks up for a while. Uh, this, in my opinion, is is kind of a misplay. Uh, I think at this point, like he's committed. Go for the tank depot. If you need AT at this point, you can you can spend some of the fuel to get a 75 mil half track out, or maybe a bazooka squad or two, because you're at the point with the Scots that you can actually deal. With the Wehrmacht infantry so a bazooka squad or, or two of them is just enough to like keep the p4s from overrunning you until you can get that easy eight out he had war machine uh already selected from the battle group so the easy eights are going to come out a little cheaper that i think in retrospect that's how i'd approach it in the game no idea i probably just would have surrendered but it's fine um go then eventually gets a tank depot and then it's a combination of hellcats shermans uh and replaced vehicles um a couple other things I want to call out. The quad 50 half track M16, hey, it actually works, right? It cuts the loiter time for the Luftwaffe loiter down by about half uh, when he gets it out. So uh, it would seem like a luxury purchase, but I think once he recognized that like, hey, this loiter is going to be a problem, um, getting that out is really smart. If he'd been able to get it sooner, he might have saved uh, the the first Scott that got knocked down by the, the strafe. Then uh, this just cracks me up. He gets a recovery vehicle out because he's lost his engineers and needs to repair his Hellcats and his EZ-8s. Um, the first recovery vehicle just gets annihilated and then he immediately builds another one. So it uh, makes me laugh. His, uh, his endgame armor concentration is an EZ-8 and three Hellcats. Um, yeah, he's in kind of a tough spot, right? Because with the Scots knocked out uh, and all of his riflemen going, he doesn't really have any options there, but he can't afford multiple EZ-8s um and so he's just kind of like on the back foot just taking swings at things so i i like the i like the kind of the thought process here um from a battle group point of view uh it goes for vet one goes to the rapid production to try to get that half track out quicker unlocks the wrecker goes for war uh d does the scott i think next um gets the wrecker gets war machine and then uh at the end there chooses the production of the easy eight because uh, he's planning on getting multiple out. He can build the tank depot uh, and get the manpa manpower savings there. So that's the breakdown of Farage's build and battle group. All right. So I addressed a lot of kind of the my thoughts within the build order. So I have a few just kind of overall takeaways. I'd say this map is really interesting to me. Like it, I can see it being frustrating to play, but I also kind of like it because the orientation of the bases with the rest of the map and the VPs really rewards players who have good situational awareness and understand when to take risks uh on capping some of you know the opponent's heavy resources uh and when to kind of pull back and and tighten up their own lines uh, and it also allows for some high risk high reward flanks especially with armored vehicles um it used to be a really uh a map that was really friendly to light vehicles now that that play has kind of uh shifted away um, you saw it, especially with the road to Tunis, instead of trying to, to punch right from his base uh, into Farage for the 1VP, swinging out to the flank on the far axis of approach and then using that uh, to good effect. Um, I like 
the pivot to the weapon support center and the sniper for Farage, right? He recognizes that he's not getting the the kills or the bleed on the grenadiers that he wants. Part of this is because uh, Road to Tunis's play pairing the pioneer, the pioneers of the Flammenwerfer, and the grenadiers, like he's doing such a good job with it that the riflemen are literally always like in a you know in the horns of dilemma. If I'm in cover, I'm getting burned down with a flamethrower. If I'm out of cover, I'm getting burned down by the Car 98s. Um, we there's a separate discussion to be had on the balance for grenadiers, but either way, Road to Tunis uses that really well. The pairing is great. The mergeability to keep the pioneers full health. Um, and then just a little bit of RNG in his favor, the rifleman just like whiffing every shot um, and dropping a bunch of models to the Grens. So Farage's response with the sniper and then into a couple of Scots, like that allows him to kind of rebalance that manpower bleed and start to regain the map control. Um, the While the Scots are a great choice at the time, that choice gets him away from like hard anti-tank, which means that the Panzer IVs have a really extended window to impact the game when they first hit the field um and so the only real suggestion that i can make and i kind of talked about this in the build order but maybe you go for a couple of the m3 half tracks with the 75 mil upgrade um he went infantry support center so he can't build him outright but at this point he has war machine unlocked via the battle group so they're at least cheaper on manpower maybe a couple of bazooka squads right there are options available to him that are low fuel and if you think about it, you, he doesn't really need to kill the Panzer IVs. He just needs to kite them enough that they don't feel comfortable pushing and fully supporting the infantry advance. And that'll give Farage enough to kind of hold hold level with him. Um, but I do want to get back to like Road to Tunis's uh, use of the map to his advantage. Uh, he gets a lot of squad wipes with his Panzer IVs because Farage trying to, to apply VP pressure and being pretty aggressive. Um, using the Panzer IVs to catch those squads on those really, really long retreat paths from the flank. Uh, he's able to get a couple of wipes there, and that ends up being a really big deal, right? Wiping a rifle squad as it's about to enter its own base. Um, that costs Farage a lot. Not necessarily in terms of, like, combat power, but in map presence and the ability to stay in the game late because he starts to run out of options. Um, the other thing I wanted to highlight, really good use of mines throughout the game. Obviously... Road to Tunis' mine Faust combo on the first N3 half track. I mean, that's a big like game swinging moment, even though it doesn't feel like it at the time. And then uh, the Panzer Grenadier squad actually got knocked out by a mine on retreat, right? They pushed forward, uh, took a bunch of casualties, retreated, hit a mine, probably intended for a vehicle, but it was enough to knock them out. So um, given the overall pace of play in this game and the length of it, it's pretty impressive that the players were still finding time to lay down mines in cheeky spots uh, throughout the game. So overall outstanding high level micro good overall strategy from both players good uh reaction in terms of the battle group choices um well played to road to tunis uh really i mean it has to feel good getting a dub against farage um and that's it that's all i got thanks everyone and uh we'll see y'all in the next one